You know what? It's time to stop messing around with this M90 supercharger. If we want to make real power, it's time to add a turbo. Hey guys, Richard Oldner here and welcome to the channel. You know what? With this 3800 V6, it's time to get rid of the supercharger and make some real power. You know what I'm talking about. It's time for a turbo. In this video, we're going to finally subject our L67 supercharged 3800 V6 to some boost. Now, this motor originally came with boost, but it came from the factory with an M90 supercharger. In this video, we're going to remove the M90 supercharger and instead replace it with a cheap low buck GT45 turbo and an air to water intercooler from Procharger. Now, our modified motor came with an L67 stock shore block, not even ring gap yet. It had a set of ported heads, it had a ZZP cam, and an intake manifold that consisted of the M90 Supercharger lower short runner intake manifold and a gutted M90 Supercharger upper. We take the turbo, blow through that intake into our modified motor, and see what happens. It's time to turn up the boost and make some real power. We've run a lot of testing with this 3800 Series 2 V6, it's L67, but you know what? It's time to start making some real power. And by real power, I mean turbo power. That's exactly what this test is all about. So we're going to show you what happened. We took the M90 supercharger off. I'm going to be doing a video later on comparing the M90 to the turbo. But right now, let's just take a look at what happened when we actually had boost from a turbocharger rather than the supercharger good stuff will ensue. So this is our combination here. This is our 3800. It was an L67 bottom end, basically a stock bottom end. I hadn't even taken it apart to either check or change the ring gap yet. <laughs> we will be doing that at a later date because we're going to do a big bang with this thing with a turbo setup. But basically we had the stock bottom end, the L67. Again, no ring gap it was changed. We had the uh, ZZP cam in this, which was a 507 lift. 220 to 30 degree duration split at 112 degree lobe separation angle. We had stock rockers on this thing. We had our long tube headers. We had the uh, ported heads that we had tried, but unfortunately the ported heads really didn't do much, but they were on there for this test. We also had the M90 supercharger lower intake manifold, the L67 lower intake manifold, and then the gutted upper intake manifold. We basically gutted the M90 supercharger and used the stock throttle body with a plate. I'll go ahead and show you a picture here. You can take a look and see what I'm talking about. And basically we're blowing through that gutted M90 supercharger into the lower manifold, into the lower short runner manifold. And we ran this thing NA before we ran it, obviously under boost with the turbo, as I like to do, and run in this manner and run with our Holly HP management system. This thing made 267 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 247 foot-pounds of torque. So this thing was starting out okay. We ran this thing on E85, even on the NA one, just so that we could put the turbo kit on and then saw it really, the E85 did nothing for this NA combination, and would, this would have made the same power on 91 octane. But here's what happened when we installed our single turbo run at first at, at a peak of 7.6 pounds as you can see we got big power gains so our turbo setup basically was i replaced the actually replaced the tubular headers with the stock exhaust manifolds that's right the stock log manifold the stock rear manifold the stock crossover and then we adapted our turbo kit off of that we ran a single uh, you can see we ran an elbow that had the provision for the wastegate. We ran a TurboSmart 45 millimeter hypergate. We ran a single GT45, a very low buck turbo, capable, I'm sure, of on this kind of 
uh, motor, capable of 800 horsepower. We wouldn't run it anywhere near that until after we put ring gap and head studs and all that stuff on there. But right now, it just had stock head bolts. It was a stock bottom end with no ring gap. We had stock head bolts. We had stock auto parts store replacement head gaskets on it with the heads that we used. And we ran it through an air to water intercooler. This one came from Pro Charger, and we just ran dyno water through the air to water intercooler. And this combination obviously worked out very well because run at a peak of 7.6 pounds, we were already at, at 418 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 387 foot pounds. But here's what happened when we did the same thing that you would do on any turbo combination, since it's so easy. We were running a manual boost controller, but the boost curve was pretty nice on this combination. I'll show you a data log from the Holly on this. We turned the boost up a little bit at a time to 9.2 pounds, and then all of a sudden we're up over 450 horsepower, 458 horsepower. Peak torque was up to 415 foot-pounds, and then we went up again one more time to 11 pounds, and all of a sudden we're right up at 500 horsepower. So we're making some fairly serious power at a fairly low boost level. So at 11 pounds, we were at 499.7, so you can't really get much closer to an actual 500. And in terms of torque, we were 449, 450.4 uh, foot-pounds, 451 foot-pounds. So we'll call that 451 foot-pounds of torque at 11 pounds of boost. So this was fairly easy. We had the tune done on our Holly HP management system so we could go up and boost. We were running about 20 degrees of timing with E85 and the intercooler still plenty safe. Again, at just 11 pounds of boost, we'd run more, way more than this just with the supercharger. But this combination worked out really well. But let's find out what happens when we go up even further on boost. So we already demonstrated the merits of the turbo by running fairly low boost. We went from 7 to 9 and then to 11 pounds. But even at just 11 pounds, we're already making 500 horsepower from our 3800. So it's doing fairly well. In fact, if you do the multiplication, we're actually above. We're, we're doing better than the formula suggests. So if you take the formula and we double the, the atmospheric pressure, 14.7 pounds, we should double the power output. But if you do the math, we're actually doing a little bit better than that. And I credit using E85 as the reason for that because we started out around 260 or 70 horsepower. And then we're looking at a lot more than that um, from our combination. So let's take a look and see what happened when we went up in boost. So as a reminder, here's what happened. This was at 11 pounds where we were at 500 horsepower. But here's what happened when we went up even more. So here's 12.6 pounds, 534 horsepower, and right at 493 foot-pounds of torque. So we were doing pretty good. Here's what happened when we went up a little more than a pound, 13.7 pounds. We were at 571 horsepower and peak torque was 524 foot-pounds. And then our final run of the day, 14.55 pounds of boost. Basically right, kind of right at doubling atmospheric pressure. It's a little bit less than that, but we were doing very well. And this took us over the 600 horsepower mark, which is really impressive for this little 3800. I was very impressed by the power output. We made 613 horsepower and peak torque checked in at 555.5. That's a lot of fives there, but over 550 foot pounds of torque. So we were doing really, really well. And as I said, we had, we're making now well over 600 horsepower by at one atmosphere of boost, basically. So we had more than doubled the power output of our NA combination at this like boost level, which shows just how impressive the combination was. And obviously we're making a lot more power than we ever did with the blower. And again, I have a video coming up where we're going to compare not only the turbo to the blower, basically at the same boost level, at the same power level. And then we're also going to compare it because really the reason that I went up as, as high as I did in terms of power and boost on this turbocharge combination is because I wanted to better the two or the couple of other high water marks that we had made previously. One, I had run a compound setup on this thing where we'd run a blower and then fed the blower, in fact, with this kind of turbo system feeding the blower. So we'd run a compound setup. So I wanted to make more power than we did with that. And also I had done another multiple power adder deal 
where we had run the supercharger on this combination with, I think, with, with three inch pulley. And then we added a fairly healthy shot of nitrous with like a 52 jet to that combination. And so we'd run the blower and nitrous on top of that. And what I wanted to do after you start making boosts, and this is the reason guys blow up so many turbo motors, is because we want it, it's so easy to make more and more power. We just keep turning the boost up and up and up, and you keep making more and more power, which is obviously a good idea until it's not, until something breaks, which is why we put ring gap in these things. But I went up and boost and I kept going on this turbo combination because I wanted to better both of those. I wanted to better the compound turbo blower setup that we'd run previously and also better the um, the blower and nitrous combination. You'll be seeing that coming up in the video where we compare the the turbo and the blower to see which one you guys would choose, what, what form of force induction you might pick, what, what do you think would be a better combination for your 3800 V6. Let's get to our conclusion. Before we got to the conclusion, I just wanted to show you one of the data logs. Of course, I didn't have the boost log on the dyno, but we did on the Holly. I wanted to show you one of the logs that we ran on one of the boost levels. This was at the highest boost level. This was 14.5 pounds. But you can see that once we had loaded the motor, we were actually at a, we started out the run at 193 kPa and ended up at 198 or 99 kPa. So we didn't have much of a rise, 6 kPa through the whole RPM range. It was not really very much. So the boost curve was fairly flat, despite the fact that we used this manual boost controller. So this GT45 turbo worked fairly well and provided a nice boost curve. It was slightly rising, which I think is part of what helped us um, continue to make power out to 6,500. In either case, the GT45 combined with our manual controller provided this kind of boost curve, and it worked out very well. Now let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what do we learn from this little adventure adding our cheap eBay GT45 Turbo to our L67-3800, you know, the supercharged V6? Will we learn the following thing? Turbos are awesome, which is exactly why I recommend them for almost everything. Add a turbo and all of a sudden you look like a hero, and that's exactly what happened on our 3800. Now, sure, it was great testing all kinds of stuff previously. We ran the blower with different pulleys and ported heads and camshafts and headers and all kinds of stuff, and all that's great testing. It's really good information, but sometimes you just want to make power, and that's exactly what a turbo does, and that's exactly what this turbo did. In fact, not only did we reach the formula, which is always good, but we exceeded the formula, which is even better. We more than doubled the power output at one atmosphere at about 14.55 pounds of boost, less than 14.7. We way more than double the power output, which is always awesome, which is why you need to put a turbo on everything. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff. More 3800 and LS and every other kind of testing coming up.